If you need to scrape videos and shorts from the YouTube Data API, I'm going to show you how to get your free YouTube API key, query for search results, and scrape hundreds of video details using our no-code platform in 2024. To get started, head to the YouTube Data API, I'll put a link in the description, and look for this link to the content version of the API if you're not interested in uploading or doing anything like that, and you just need to scrape data about search results, channels, playlists, shorts, etc. You then need to get your free YouTube Data API key, so head to console.cloud.google.com, link in the description. You then want to create a new project. If you're new here, Google will probably prompt you to do one. So click the Create a New Project button, and you'll be able to get a YouTube API key restricted to just that project. Next, we need to enable the YouTube Data API to this project. So you can browse for it here, or just search up here and type in YouTube Data API, and you should find it pretty easily. After carefully reviewing the terms of service, you then hit enable and this will add it to your project. So this is totally free, you don't even need to add payment details for this to work. We then go to credentials, and then we have to go up here for this button called create credentials on the top of the screen, and you click it, and it will create your API key after a few seconds. So you can copy this to start using it right away, but if you lose it, it'll always be here. So it's not one of those things where they only give it to you once. It'll be here if you forget it. You just click show key here on the right when you come back. And if your key is compromised, like by sharing it in a YouTube video like this one as I'm doing, you can delete your key. You can also add some restrictions if you're a little bit paranoid, but honestly, unless you share your API key with someone else, you probably don't need to worry about this. But if you're part of an organization, it may be a good idea to restrict your API key to certain IP addresses like those from your office. To test the API key, you can put it in your favorite client like Postman or the Steve C Data Platform as I just did. So I pasted in my API key with a query for coffee and can confirm that it's working. Once you start making a request, you can keep an eye on your usage by clicking this Enabled tab up here. And then down below, you'll see tabs to look at your quota and usage so you can make sure you're not exceeding your quota. It's pretty generous for being free. I looked up 100 video details. But what you have to keep an eye on is the quota, not the actual request. So you can click through here, wait for these things to load, and then you should see this quota tab up here in System Limits. Click through that, and this is what you need to keep an eye on with the YouTube Data API. So mostly you're gonna be restricted by your queries per day. I'm assuming you're not gonna be doing a lot of queries per minute if you're just scraping data. So you can see I have a quota allowance of 10,000 units, and I already used 1382 because I was doing video details lookups. So you can keep an eye on this, but that should be enough to scrape maybe 500 to 1,000 videos a day. One of the downsides to this being free is you just can't pay them more to increase your quotas. You can go here and try to edit the quota, but you have to go to this form and apply for a higher quota. So depending on your organization, uh, this may be relevant if you have a working relationship with YouTube already. So that's the only downside. A way around this that they probably don't want me talking about is that you could just create multiple projects and each project will have its own quota of 10,000 calls a day. So if you need to do that, you know, you may want to give that a try if YouTube does not approve your quota increase request. Once we have that key, we can now start making a request to the YouTube Data API. So here is the search list endpoint. This is basically a way to just run any search on YouTube and get the results back. So in order to use this, we can click on this API thing towards the right hand side, which is complaining that we have to put in snippet under the part parameter, which is kind of silly because snippet is the only acceptable value. Anyway, scroll down here to Q and you can put in any search term you want to search YouTube for. So I'm just going to start simple and we'll work our way up. Here, deselect this Google OAuth. You don't need this because we're just scraping public data. Keep API key selected and run execute. So now it's using your API token to make a request. So here you just kind of want to copy this and you can put, paste it in your favorite text editor like Sublime Text. Here's what the response data looks like. So we unfortunately don't get too much data back about each video. We do get the video ID so we can look it up on YouTube. We can see when the video was published, the channel ID who published it, the title of the video, and a partial description. This is only going to be the first maybe 100 characters or so. You can get a link to the thumbnail. I know that can be pretty useful if you want to see what kind of thumbnails people are using for SEO. And you can watch the video by copying this video ID here, which is in the snippet ID tag and then going to any YouTube URL and just plotting the YouTube ID in the URL where it says V equals, and you'll be able to watch the video if you'd like. Another great feature of this API is that it only returns five results per request at a time by default, but if you set the max results parameter, you can set it up to 50, which I would highly recommend because they charge you the same number of credits per request. So you may as well get back as much data as possible. So look for the max results parameter here, and just plop in 50, and now boom, we'll start getting 50 results back per request. But as I mentioned, the data here is a little bit thin, so we wanna get the full data behind each video. 
we need to go here on the left hand side and look for the videos endpoint. Specifically, we want the list endpoint. So this will allow us to put in a video ID and the API will give us back a lot more information, including the full description and statistics like the view count, like count and comment count. So we can see the data here is a lot more robust. We have the full description now of the video, which may be useful if you're doing some analysis, not this little short description like we got before. They also give us more thumbnails. They give us a link to the max res image, but you could just substitute this for any URL and you'd get that anyway. But the biggest thing here is we get the view count, like count, and comment count. So we can see how much engagement this video has been getting since the time it was published and sort of estimate a view per hour metric, although it won't be exact. All right, now I wanna go through all these other parameters you can use and highlight the important ones. I also wanna show you guys how you can run searches for shorts only because that's a hidden undocumented feature of this API. All right, the first parameter I wanna talk about is order because that's a really important one if you're trying to track rankings on YouTube. So by default, it will return order of relevance, which is similar to how the website returns results. And it will depend on the region code or what IP address is querying the API. So here I set it to the US and the top results are different. I no longer see Miguel because I'm not querying from Mexico. If you need to scrape more than 50 results per search term, you need to use page token. So in the response for my initial request, when I look at the raw JSON that YouTube gave me, I'll see this page token here for next page token. Just copy that and then under page token where it asks you, you can paste it in there. So this, by the way, is a Steve C data platform. You don't have to use this, but you can see the query on the right hand side. You could write your own Python code to query the YouTube API. This just makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to write or maintain any code. And bam, here's a second page of results. I can instantly download these as a CSV file now. If you care about when the video was published, you can use these published after and published before parameters to specify exactly when the video was published for. If you're trying to monitor media for a specific event or news coverage, you can plop them in here. The format's a little bit funny, just pay attention to the example, like this, this one here, it says 1970-0101. You have to put a Z at the end to denote UTC time zone, but you can just kind of paste in the example and then just change the year and month accordingly. We talked about Q before, that's the actual query, but I want to highlight they have an OR operator here and a NOT operator, so these are similar to Boolean searches. So here I can go down and change my query, and let's say I want to search for coffee or tea, I can add the pipe delimiter here, and then type in another term. So you can do this with several search terms if you'd like. So now it's gonna be coffee or tea in the search results, which I can verify right here that all the results contain either the word coffee or tea in the title at least. Another thing to know is that the results will be a mix of channels, playlists, and videos. If you only want videos back, be sure to set the type parameter to just video, or you can change it to channel or playlist if you're interested in those. Here I already have it set, so I've only been searching for videos on the Steve C data platform. Another good field is the video paid product placement field. You can set that to true and it will only return videos with a paid sponsorship. So this can be useful if you're looking for influencers you want to promote your product. Just set the flag to true and then all the results will have that field set so you know that there's some paid sponsorship going on in the video and you may be able to reach out to the creator to see if they'd be interested. So the last thing I wanna talk about is how to scrape shorts. If I look for YouTube shorts in the documentation, all I get here is this flag that says include videos that are all less than four minutes long, which is not useful. So if I wanna scrape YouTube shorts, there's a little hidden feature here that I can use. See, they're all tagged with this hashtag shorts. So you can also query the YouTube API by hashtags. It's not really documented, but if you just add to your search query here, space, and then hashtag shorts, it seems to just work. So everything down here has hashtag shorts and I check the duration, they're typically under a minute. You may get a few that just have that hashtag randomly there, so you may want to filter it out and check the durations to be 100% sure you're only looking at YouTube shorts. So those are the basics. If you need to scrape bulk data, like getting YouTube search result video details, this workflow here will do that for you. This is a paid feature though of the Steve C Data Platform, link in the description. This will run a search and then look up all the video details for everything in the results. So you can download a combined file showing you the statistics like view count, like count, etc. for all of the videos matching your search term using the official YouTube data API. If you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the description. Or let me know in the comments if I missed something or you want to see more parts of the YouTube data API in 2024. And I'll be happy to cover those components of how to use the API. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.